is difficult to get a room filled with sellers that are in distress. I realize that. You never know you might see your neighbor. Oops, he's in trouble too. You know what I mean? So, uh, best case scenario is I know this would benefit everybody. And if you have a situation like these after the class, I have my business card also contacting folks. And definitely welcome. More, it's better for more of a private situation. It may not be you, it could be your auntie, friends, whoever it is. Someone we know is in trouble. And we need to help them. We need to help them. So, first and foremost, I'm going to cover the mortgage details. Um, let's jump down to the middle of the page. Reasons for the default. So, uh, this is the process of foreclosure. Why do I want to include that here? Because we all tend to think someone just dropped the ball, they want to pay the mortgage anymore. That's why they're default. Is that true? Is it borrower's problem? Majority of the time, it is. But is it? No, no, it isn't. Why? Because I took the certification course from the National Association of Realtors. And that designation is called Certified Short Sale and Foreclosure Research. So I can tell you, I've been trained to teach sellers and borrowers alike why it's not always your fault. People always think, they are dead people, that's why you want to pay. And for many years, uh, months, the banks have the same attitude. You didn't want to pay. Why should I help you? You didn't want to pay. I don't want to help you. And there has been a struggle. So let's talk about some of the reasons for foreclosures. For why are people in default? Number one, job loss. Is it their fault? <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. California's at what, 12% unemployment? Is it my fault? No, I don't think so, but I'm, well, I guess I'm lucky. Business failure. I work for a small business that failed. Well, how about I am a small business owner that failed. And many have gone under, even though they were successful years and years and years. Is it my fault? Think about it. Payment increase or mortgage adjustment. What am I saying, payment increase? I'm sure all of you heard of the famous word. Everybody was offering this. Oops, I'm using the wrong pen. Okay. Where is it? Oh. Okay, hit. Oh my God. Two, three years ago, everybody was selling these arms, adjustable rate mortgages. Is it their fault? Oh, borrowers' fault or bank's fault? Uh, you answer the question. This led to the most of the problems. And along with other things too, but that's it. Why? Payment adjustment. In your real estate finance course, did it talk about adjustable rate mortgage? Did it say how long is it going to adjust, when it's going to adjust? And when it does, what happens to your payment? Anyone tell you, you that anymore? You think the borrowers, when they go to ESCO sign paper, gee, I can buy half a million dollar loan. My pay is twelve hundred dollars. Common sense, is it really? All these years I've been in the real estate finance business, the true adjustable rate mortgages have been the you may not see this much anymore. It might. It might come back. Of 
Now, and you know, I'm one firm believer. I did not like this park. Who sold it the most? Well, no savings. Just remember. They were Wachovia now, but they've gone through good <coughs> tough times. And the Wachovia now is Wells Fargo. So, it's getting better. Let me explain this really quickly, and we move on. What happens is this. On these type of loans, you start off at 1%. I'm sure all of us got junk mail. True? <laughs> a few years ago, you see a lot of mailer, 1%. You can qualify. Get into your home, half a million dollars, one, I mean, no one, $1,200 payment. That's all? 